Good day everyone. Welcome to today's chemistry class. Today we'll be talking about electronic configuration. And I, Ibrahim Malagoki, is going to take you through this session, the background of the study. There is balls put of an atom which talked about each of it giving a number, and this number is called the quantum number. Now ball orbits are like steps of a ladder, each of which has a specific distance from the nucleus and a specific energy. Now, you can see the N1, N2, N3 uh, signifies the energy levels. Now, let's say the electronic configuration of an atom. This is the arrangement of electrons in the orbitals of an atom, and it's been described by the number of principal shell, a letter that describes the orbital or the subshell, and a superscript that describes the number of electrons in that subshell. Let's take an example. We have 2p4. The 2 there shows the second shell, p the suborbital, and 4 the number of electrons. So we we'll have 3s2. This indicates one electron in the subshell of the third shell. Now there are several rules governing this electronic configuration. One we have the half bounce principle. This principle states that electrons in an atom occupies first the lowest possible energy level or orbital. Now you can see this is the half bounce diagram starting from the red arrow. You go down 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, and so on up to the last, which is 7p. Now the second rule is the Pauli's exclusion principle, and this states that no two electrons in the same atom can have the same set of four quantum numbers. What are these quantum numbers? They are the principal quantum number, azimuthal, spin, and magnetic. And the maximum number of electrons in an orbital is limited to two. So the spin has to be paired, and it's represented by an arrow up and the arrow down. Now the last rule is the Hunt's rule, which states that electrons prefer to enter degenerate, degenerate orbital singly before pairing begins. Taking, for instance, carbon with an atomic number of 6, you can see the 2p orbital energy level having one electron each, instead of the 2 entering the first orbital. Nitrogen also, the same thing with 2p, you have single electrons in each and uh, orbitals of similar level. Now, taking oxygen, you have 2p, you have two electrons in the first and one one in each. So the electron goes into the degenerate orbital singly first before pairing begins. Now, there is an exception to this rule that is in the case of copper and chromium, which have a fully filled or half filled D orbital, and this is more stable. So the electrons in 4s is excited and rises to the 3d energy level. Now let's see the arrangement of electrons in the atom of the first 10 elements. Recall, for these suborbitals we have s, p, d, and f. The s suborbital can only take a maximum of 2 electrons. The p can take a maximum of 6. The d can take a maximum of 10, while the f can take a maximum of 14. Now the first one, hydrogen, which is an atomic number of 1, you have 1s1. For helium, 1s2, lithium, 1s2, 2s1, beryllium, 1s2, 2s2, boron with an atomic number of 5, 1s2, 2s2, 2p1, carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, nitrogen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, Oxygen 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, fluorine 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, and neon 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. Now let's see how to write the electronic configurations. For potassium with an atomic number of 19, we we'll start from the 1s, the maximum you can take is 2. Now you have 17 left, 2s will take 2. Having 15 left, 2p can take 6, 
having nine left. Three S can take two, you have seven left. Three P can take six, having one left. Then the last one electron will go to four S. The second one is the magnesium atom, which has an atomic number of 12. This will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2. Now our assignment for today is, you have to write the electronic configuration and draw the orbital structure of the following elements. Thanks for viewing.